Welcome, in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 and today I'll show you how we can go through the setup process of this phone. So, once you boot it up for the first time, uh, you will be presented with this screen right over here, assuming the device is brand new and hasn't been set up just yet. Now I'll mention one thing, I believe this phone will become locked for me just because I did reset it to recovery mode without signing out of uh, Google account, so uh, there will be just a little bit of a difference which I'll point out once we approach to it. So anyway, let's just get started by clicking on this blue button and then finding our desired language. I'll be selecting English. From there we can also connect to mobile network by inserting a SIM card. This is completely optional and you don't have to do it. The reason uh, we have this right here is so you can connect to a network either through a SIM card or through Wi-Fi. And if you're setting up the device for the first time, uh, you do have to connect to one of them for some effing like, stupid reason, Samsung is just absolutely obnoxious about that. I have no reason why, when the device is brand new, you shouldn't need to. But Samsung is absolutely special, so uh, yeah, F you and connect. Uh, that's basically what Samsung says. So anyway, now for me, I will also need to connect to network just because the device presumably will be locked for me. Anyway. On the next page, we have some uh, uh, for you, for your review. Okay, anyway, so we have a uh, user license agreement and we have also some optional trash that I'm not gonna even go into. So select the first one and that's the only one that you need to select. Additionally, you can tap on the details right here to read exactly what you're agreeing to. From there, moving on to the next page, uh, tells me that I need to connect to Wi-Fi. We just obviously need to connect to Wi-Fi. Now in your case, uh, you will need to connect to it Anyway, for me, I have a skip button for some reason. Fantastic. Um, anyway, I'm going to connect to it right now. And it moves into the eSIM portion, which if you don't have an eSIM, then you can't really do anything, just pop in a normal SIM card. If you do, uh, it's just like a, inserting a code or scanning a QR code. But I'm gonna be skipping this just because I'm not planning to use to set it up. And I believe now it will show me that the device is locked. Or maybe before will be the import data probably. Yep, so there we go. So as you can see, I do need to verify my pattern that was previously used on this device. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Normally you, will, you wouldn't see this at all. Uh, what you would see is, is this right here. So here you can connect to your Google account if you want to. If you don't, it's completely fine. You can skip it. Now, next thing, we actually have the copy apps and the data, which normally that is actually a step before, but here it's later. Um, this will allow you to basically import all the data from an older device. This does use, I believe, the Samsung's account, or not account, but Samsung's application called, let me quickly check. I did download it not too long ago, just so I can check it out, but I can't remember. But it's something like Smart, uh, Smart Switch, I think it's called. Uh, so. That's one way that you can obviously move over your data. It will be probably the better way, considering Smart Switch allows you to select every kind of application that you want to move over, and you can pick and choose between apps. And also it allows you to move over accounts along with uh, music, uh, files, and all that stuff that is just strictly on your phone. Uh, when transferring with Google account, like it says right here, uh, because that's also one of the options, Google account uh, basically just imports everything that is assigned to the account itself and not really like this data that is stored locally. So if you have, for instance, documents that you keep locally on your phone uh, and then not on the cloud, those will not be imported through Google account. But if you use the smart switch, you can check that you also want to import the documents as well. So those would be then imported using their proprietary application. Anyway, I'm gonna be selecting don't copy and set up the device as new, which again brings me back to signing into uh, to Google account. 
Okay, let's skip it again. And this will then allow me to uh, choose some Google services. So we have three different ones, location, scanning, and sending user and diagnostic data. You can read exactly what these do by tapping on a dropdown right here. And if you don't like them, you can just disable them, scroll down and select accept. This will then allow you to choose your desired search engine. As you can see, you have a fairly decent list of engines. I'm gonna just skip with, uh, not skip, but stick with the vanilla one, which is the Chrome or Google. And then we have the option to set some kind of protection to our phone. Now there's several different ways of protecting your device that be through face recognition, fingerprint, and also some physical way of unlocking the device like pin pattern or password. If you plan to use either one of the first two, face recognition and or fingerprint, you would always be required to set up pin pattern or password. Now the reason for that is if you would cut your finger or maybe the cameras get damaged, though you have two of them to utilize here, uh, you would lose access to the device. Thus, the option for pin pattern or password. And obviously, if you don't want to protect your device, you can skip it. This will then give us some review additional applications. Some def uh, default applications that you can select that will be automatically installed on this device, though I don't really want them. So I'm going to unselect them and then go to the next page. Now here we have Samsung account. So this is just similar to Google account, but from Samsung, if you don't know. Uh, there is, in my opinion, very little uh, reason to have a Samsung account or to use it. Though I'm gonna quickly go into it because Samsung does this absolutely obnoxious thing like this, where it gives you this shitty pop-up uh, telling you, skip out on all this like it's some grandiose thing and it wasn't plagiarized from just google itself and <clears throat> just to kind of clarify this samsung cloud is substituted by google cloud which is also on this device bixby hey google galaxy theme entire play store find my find my mobile find my device samsung pass google passwords galaxy store again play store secure folder might be the only actual usable thing here but if you don't need it really no reason for you to set up uh, the actual account and samsung members uh, which this is the first time I'm seeing this. So expert support, community, connectivity, and uh, excellent perks. Fantastic description of something that that doesn't really describe anything. Um, so yeah, I'm still gonna skip it because none of these things provide me any benefit because everything that I want would be associated with Google account anyway. And to also give some people a little bit of perspective, if you plan to use Samsung account instead of Google account, as an example, and you do a cloud backup, this will be backed up to Samsung cloud. And if by any chance you later on switch to maybe a different brand of device, uh, whatever that may be, Huawei, uh, Vivo, whatever it is, uh, then you won't be able to restore the backups which are kept on Samsung cloud because they only want you to restore it on a Samsung. But Google, on the other hand side, would be able to restore on basically any other Android. So uh, I wouldn't consider that uh, Samsung account to be very worth it. Obviously you can have both. That is also another option, uh, but I just prefer not to use it at all. Now we have Samsung services. So we have uh, continue services, customer services, nearby, whatever you can read exactly what these do and if you want them keep them on don't really care too much and last thing we have is the take care of your phone so this is still a foldable uh, flexible the display it is still kind of soft and they give you this list of uh, things that you shouldn't do to your phone so we have uh, basically don't press really hard on the display with like fingernails and stuff like that. Uh, only use an S Pen to use it on this display right here. Um, don't put anything between the display when you're folding it up. So if you have like a credit card, don't put it in there. It could fit, probably wouldn't damage it, but don't do it. Uh, next thing, uh, the device isn't dust resistant, which is a little bit weird considering it's water resistant. So you can bathe with it if you want to, but in terms of dust, you might want to stay away from that. The reason for that is could get into the hinge and start making really 
and not wanted noises from the like, crackling and scratching between the hinges. Next thing, don't remove the screen protector. There is a pre-applied screen protector. Uh, Samsung does apparently uh, replaces it. The first time you can get it replaced for free if it's, I believe, on warranty. But the second time I think you need to pay, apparently based on what I've heard recently from Mr. Mobile, um, Michael Fisher, basically. He did say when he was replacing his that a next consecutive replacement would cost $20. So you can do it. And also, I did read up somewhere that apparently Samsung allows you to swap it up yourself. There are aftermarket screen protectors that you can utilize instead. So you could do that though. I do urge you to check it out yourself just to be absolutely certain so you don't void your warranty. And last thing would be to keep the device away from anything that is sensitive to magnets. The device does have magnets, so if you have some kind of like pacemakers or stuff like that, don't put it in your front pocket then. Uh, and obviously any other like hard drives and stuff like that, do keep it away. It might damage the hard drives and stuff like that because of the built-in magnets into the device. But anyway, this is basically all the grocery release that, that we have right here. So let's select next and finish, and this should give us access to our home screen. And there we go. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.